Hi, in this video we're going to be talking about SolidWorks Circuit Works, which enables the SolidWorks mechanical user to collaborate with ECAG users uh, that have a PCB layout tool that can export either an IDF, an IDX, or a PADS ASCII file. Now, ultimately, what we're looking at is CircuitWorks is an add-in to SolidWorks. So, in this particular case, I'm going to ensure that my add-in is turned on by going to my add-ins and selecting the very first add-in in your list, CircuitWorks. Once that's done, we can select Tools, CircuitWorks, and Open ECAG file. Now, you'll notice there's quite a few varieties of files that we can open. Um, we have the ability to open up on the IDF format versions 2, 3, and 4. On the IDF, we can open up 2 and 3 in the PADS ASCII file. Now the IDF um, really is kind of limited to versions 2 and 3 based off the output of the current platforms out there. So if your ECAD program can output an IDF 3, that's awesome. Uh, with IDX uh, version 3, we do have a small benefit over the IDF being that we can export the traces on the top and the bottom layers of your PCB layout and then be able to import those into SolidWorks. The PADS ASCII file actually allows us to not only import the traces and the uh, information from the top and bottom layers but also the layers in between. So, just really depends on what you're trying to accomplish inside of SolidWorks. Most people are looking at form and fit, so IDF 2 or 3 or the IDX would be more than adequate for, for what you need. If you are looking at taking this a little bit further into maybe doing uh, maybe a structural study or a thermal study inside of SolidWorks, uh, we have to look at the, the ability to export out as an IDX uh, 3 or the PADS ASCII file. Anyways, we're going to go in and I'm going to open up uh, an example here. So I have my circuit work examples. We'll look at the IDF3 to start off with because that's the most common. So when I select this, we're going to open this up and it's going to open it up in a, a separate interface here that will allow us to actually review what we're going to actually bring in. So we get to see what we're going to bring and see what's available in the IDF file and actually filter out things that we may not need. So if you're just looking to make sure that the board's going to fit and that we don't have any components interfering with the tall components on your board, we actually have filtering where we can actually say, I want to filter components. So I'm going to select this filter components and then anything shorter than a specific height. So if I say anything less than two millimeters, any component that's less than two millimeters when I select build the model inside of SolidWorks won't actually be pushed over to the mechanical tool. In this particular case, I'm going to go ahead and just say build model and I might get some warnings here. As it's building the model, we'll talk about those warnings. Now ultimately, the biggest drawback that we're going to have here on the SolidWorks side isn't whether or not we can import these, is how much information is being provided to us from the ECAD tool. One of the most common things that's going to be missing is the component height because in the ECAD tool, they really didn't have a need for component heights so they don't enter it when they're creating their components. In this particular case, we can either actually ask them to place that information into the component and then export out as an IDF file again, or in CircuitWorks, we can actually enter that information into uh, the component for use inside of SolidWorks. Once that information has actually been entered, it's gonna create a library. So there's a, a CircuitWorks library that gets created and then when you start bringing in additional boards, it's going to reference that library. So as you actually use CircuitWorks, the more you use it, the more, uh, the faster the program will actually perform as far as translating boards. So now that we've actually imported this board into SolidWorks, we can see this board, I can place it into uh, another assembly, such as an enclosure, to make sure everything's going to fit. If I need to, I can actually make changes to the board shape or maybe uh, move the whole location or uh, add additional cutouts. We can also place things like keepouts and send that back out from SolidWorks into CircuitWorks to have CircuitWorks create an IDF file that can be placed into an ECAD application. So for example, I can create a board in, let's say, uh, Mentor Expedition. I can export that out as an IDX file. And the really interesting thing about IDX is, is we create what's called a baseline. 
and then SOLIDWORKS will build their, its assembly based off of that baseline. If I make changes to the board, it will create an update to the baseline that can be opened inside of the ECAD application. And then we can review those changes, we can see it, and then maybe we need to move something over a little bit based off of a trace or uh, RF requirements or something like that. And then I can actually send an update to the update. So we actually aren't sending the whole board configurations back and forth every time. We actually send incremental updates. That's one of the benefits of IDF over the IDX standard. With the IDX, we're sending full board information, whether I'm coming from the ECAD tool into SOLIDWORKS or from SOLIDWORKS into the ECAD tool. One other benefit that we have here is um, the PADS ASCII file. So if you're using uh, Mentor PADS, when I select open the ECAG file, we can select here and select PADS. And we'll go to this PADS ASCII file here. And you'll see uh, the, the benefits here is the layer information is actually going to transfer over. So I can actually see the layers. If I right click on it, I can actually see the thicknesses and add them all up to make sure everything's working right. But more importantly, I have my plated holes, my non-plated holes, and here's my traces, my pads, and my filled areas. Um, the filled areas would be maybe like your uh, ground planes, that type of thing. So through pads, uh, like if you're using uh, Mentor's uh, pads, uh, you can export out as a uh, PADS ASCII file, or if you're using an ECAD tool that has the ability to export out as a PADS ASCII file, uh, you actually get a lot more information uh, at, a, uh, at this, the same cost, essentially, of uh, using an IDF or an IDX. Uh, so if you're looking for that information in the middle layers for possible uh, use in uh, an FEA or fluid dynamics uh, simulations, inside of SOLIDWORKS. Uh, the pads is really going to be your best best bet. So that is the uh, CircuitWorks application. As I mentioned, we can essentially work with any ECAD application as long as it has the ability to export an IDF, IDX, which is uh, commonly referred to as ProStep, or the pads ASCII file. We can import, we can review and filter before we bring into uh, bring the, the information into SOLIDWORKS to create a SOLIDWORKS assembly. And any changes that we want to, to make to the component location, the board shape, cutouts, hole locations, or sizes can actually be performed inside of SOLIDWORKS and then exported back into CircuitWorks where we can then take that information and create an IDX, IDF, or a PADS ASCII file to send back to the ECAG user. Again, depending on your software, most of them will allow you to actually update your existing board from an IDF file or an IDX, uh, so you can actually get that bi-directional communication. Um, and as always, you can actually start the board inside of SOLIDWORKS by creating a solid body inside of or a part file with a uh, solid body on the front plane. Uh, place your keep outs, plated holes, non-plated holes, and then there's a wizard that will actually guide you through uh, defining what is a plated hole, what is a non-plated hole, what is the board shape, what are cutouts or holes, uh, what are keep outs, uh, what type of keep out is it, is it a component keep out or a, a component keep in, for example, uh, and then send that information out, uh, export it out of SOLIDWORKS through the CircuitWorks interface as an IDF or an IDX file uh, that can then be used in your ECAD application. So that's CircuitWorks, uh, part of the SOLIDWORKS application suite for communicating with ECAD tools that can export IDF, IDX, or PADS ASCII. Now, if you happen to be an Altium user, we have an application that is an Altium extension called SOLIDWORKS PCB Connector for Altium that allows this bi-directional communication. If you're looking at bringing your designs in-house or upgrading your existing PCB tools, we also have SOLIDWORKS PCB, which is powered by Altium, that allows us the seamless communication as well. Thank you.